It is well known that the Big Bang was the galactic birth of our universe. Contrary to initial impression, the term Big Bang does not describe a gigantic explosion, in the course of which individual cosmic objects and structures were hurled through space at breathtaking speeds, but rather the common emergence of space, matter, and time from a preceding singularity. Although the Big Bang theory meets with wide approval in the ranks of experts, there are nevertheless some experts who have doubts about this thesis. One exciting question in particular has become the focus of scientific interest. Did time begin with the Big Bang? In today's video, you'll find out what answers scientists have to this question and what makes this subject so difficult to fathom. Want to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries and groundbreaking discoveries of the universe? Then don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the bell to never miss one of our videos again. If you like the content of our posts, we'd be very happy to get a thumbs up. The Birth of the Universe As briefly touched upon already, one of the most fundamental Big Bang theories is that matter, space, and time came into being together from an original singularity. In the field of astronomy, the expression singularity covers, however, those places where the gravitational force is so strong that the curvature of space-time is practically infinite. From this characteristic of the galactic birth hour, we can derive in the certain conclusion that the universe as we know it today originally once had a completely different face. According to this, the universe had assumed the form it presents to us today only over the course of billions of years, accompanied by the most diverse expansion processes. On the basis of these constellations and structures that we can observe at present in the universe, it's possible for scientists to reconstruct how the universe looked in its earliest phase. It's in the nature of man to want to fathom in detail the objects and modes of action in his environment. This scientific curiosity leads us not least to the question of the galactic origin of our universe. And it's exactly here that the opinions of experts divide at the Big Bang Theory. According to this theory, some researchers consider it conceivable that time could not have begun at all with the Big Bang. In fact, it's even possible that time had no beginning at all. But how is that possible? As soon as we approach an unsolved problem, we try to decipher the corresponding question with the help of our own logic. This applies to the exact course of the Big Bang. Thus, researchers search the vastness of the universe for verifiable clues, which they can then weave into their theoretical explanations. However, the search for the galactic beginning may already contain a misleading fallacy. We know from the objects and structures around us that they must have originated or been created one day. But what if this circumstance cannot be transferred at all to the total context of the universe? Is it possible that our universe had no beginning in the classical sense? Before the general acceptance of the Big Bang theory, several different theories about the origin of the universe existed within the ranks of researchers for many years, some of which were fundamentally different from each other. One of these theses says that the universe is only expanding steadily today because it had once contracted in the past. However, it's supposed to be a recurring process so that the expansion of the universe taking place at present is posited to be followed by a galactic contraction one day. On the other hand, there is the assumption that the expansion of the universe represents a steady, even eternal state. Consequently, in the context of this expansion process, new matter would form regularly in order to keep the corresponding density on a constant level. Together with the Big Bang theory already mentioned, three central possibilities for the characteristics of our galactic home therefore arise. The universe possessed a beginning, the universe possesses a cyclic nature, or the eternally expanding universe has always existed. While these three basic theories caused heated debates among scientists for many years, a sensational discovery in the 1960s was to change the scientific world for all time. The Discovery of Cosmic Background Radiation In the course of this discovery, experts quickly realized that the ominous background radiation in the microwave range fills the entire universe. Even more sensational, however, was the realization that this radiation has an isotropic character. 
This means that the background radiation has the same intensity everywhere, regardless of direction. Since the temperature of the corresponding radiation is only a few degrees above absolute zero, its characteristics correspond to the time when the universe cooled down from a hot, dense state after its formation. In fact, the microwave background radiation has the approximate nature of a so-called black body. This term is used by experts to describe a thermal radiation source that completely absorbs all electromagnetic radiation, regardless of wavelength. Let us briefly recall the Big Bang Theory. According to it, the universe in its earliest phase was significantly hotter, denser, and smaller than today. Those typical characteristics we observe today in the universe thus arose only by the expansion and the cooling of the universe caused by the influence of gravitational forces. From this again, the fact can be derived that background radiation has also shown considerably shorter wavelengths with a considerably smaller universe at that time. Thus, many billions of years ago, it was so hot in the compressed universe that not even neutral atoms could form. Even earlier, microwave radiation had such an intensity that it was the most energetic form of all. Scientific Doubts and Alternative Approaches If we consider the development of the universe backwards, we arrive inevitably at a time at which the entire space of the universe was compressed on a single point. And exactly this is the fundamental character of the singularity, a spatial condition where neither space nor time possess a superordinate meaning. Consequently, at singularities, both the spatial and the temporal dimensions cease to exist. At first sight, therefore, the question of what was before the event at which time began to exist seems exceedingly paradoxical. Provided that we regard the Big Bang Theory as true, an occupation with this topic becomes practically superfluous. However, some experts pursue the approach that the reconstruction of the universe on an original singularity does not reflect actual circumstances. This supports the numerous measurement data which were collected in the context of modern astronomical research. Accordingly, from this information we can deduce, among other things, how high the maximum temperature of the primeval universe was. This is posited to have been almost 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. However, about 1000 times higher temperatures would have been necessary to make a singularity possible. If one follows the explanations of the experts, then a phase occurred immediately after the Big Bang called cosmological inflation. With it, that time period is meant in which the expansion of space proceeded with extreme speed. Some researchers now believe that the early universe was susceptible to fluctuations, so that in fact not only one, but a multitude of universes could have formed. In this process, the individual universes are virtually bubble-like in structure, with each of these galactic worlds constantly producing new universes. This perpetual galactic chain reaction would be equivalent to an eternal inflation. In this case, our universe would be a continuously expanding bubble in an unimaginably large, expanding space-time. If this is correct, there was a phase of the exponential expansion before the actual Big Bang, which could have lasted, purely theoretically, infinitely long. What was before time? Most scientists are of the opinion that time originated in the course of the Big Bang. The problem confronting researchers in the context of their work is the fact that they can approach the time of the Big Bang mathematically, but they can't pinpoint it exactly. In fact, with their equations, astrophysicists are currently only able to approximate the Big Bang by 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds. Accordingly, the question about what was before the Big Bang, and therefore also before time, cannot be answered from the scientific point of view at present. The scientists simply do not possess the measurable possibilities to draw circumstantial conclusions concerning this topic. Consequently, nobody can say with final certainty what was before the Big Bang. Not only astrophysicists, but also philosophers deal with the question about the beginning of time. Thereby, the approach is often represented that time itself can possess no beginning at all, since that origin would have represented for its part a point in time. However, Every point in time comes with the characteristic that it stands in earlier or later relations to other points of time.
Consequently, before every point of time, there is an earlier time phase. If we consider a statement by Stephen Hawking, the question about what was before the Big Bang is completely superfluous. The astrophysicist, who died in 2018, once said that this question had the same character as though one would ask, what's more northern than the North Pole? We're interested in your opinion. What do you think about this challenging topic? We're already looking forward to your comments. Now take a look at the other videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the thumbnails in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.